Hi, and welcome back. This is We Ride Motos. My name is Glenn. And I'm Carrie. And today we're heading into lavender country. Today we're heading away from the coast and into lavender country. We are going to check out the French countryside. I often try to scope out an interesting town or landscape along the way. So today we are going to see a little town called Tour Tour. It's listed as the prettiest little town in the sky, something like that. So it looked really cute, so we're going to check that out. And we should be hitting it for lunchtime. Road up and viewed it from the top. Mm -hmm. uh, Verdon Gorge, I believe it's called. It's, I think it says it's the biggest canyon in Europe. Um, so that was interesting. Yeah, road to the top, viewed it from the top. Mm -hmm. Road down. Across the bridge, park, then look down in the waters. Now you gotta remember, I mean, this is getting to be, we're up in the mountains now, and this is mm -hmm. getting to be mid ish, late September. Yeah. I think around the 18th, 19th of September. And there's people still down there in mm -hmm. their little paddle boats. And... It was quite warm that day. Oh, lots of people down yeah, there. Yeah, the beautiful, the blue turquoise water was just absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, Watching all the people that came to rent the boat and no idea how to use Yeah, one. <laughs> they don't know how to paddle a boat. They don't know how to it was, paddle or steer. Yeah, or, oh my they, goodness, I it was funny. I think we had as much fun watching that than actually going out and paddling ourselves. I think sometimes people <laughs> watching is more interesting than yeah. some of the other yeah, things. It was pretty funny. After visiting that area, then we headed into lavender country. Now, unfortunately, when we're a month or two behind the actual harvest, so yeah. it 
harvest was long over, so yeah. it was just kind of the bare field. Yeah. But I'm going to try to find a couple pictures just to show There's you how lead, beautiful it is. A in lot of lavender. Lots of lavender fields, area. but they were just kind of... They were dried and brown and... Yeah, some of them they were actually ripping up and burning, so I'm not sure what that was about. I never, I maybe never figured it's... that out. Maybe lavender only has a certain amount of time it can live and it's done. Maybe. If you know, let us know. Yeah. We're always into finding out stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we did in, I can't remember the name of the town. Well, we'll do that part when we know what the name of the yeah. town is. Yeah. Or I'll just... Because our notes are all done. Yeah. Or I'll just put it up there. Yeah, let's do a flip. But it was a cute little town <laughs> and we rented a little Airbnb just above... Um, Somebody had made the, the little yeah, it was like top a, part of their house into yeah, an Airbnb. Yeah, a, a family that came from Albania. Yeah. And they were living in France. And a really nice couple. Yeah, they were yeah. so excited on our bike. We have our stickers and they saw that we had been to Albania. So they were very excited. Oh, he was excited. Yeah. He just he just puts his hand up and says, wait. <laughs> and he disappeared. And moments later, he comes back and he's got his hooch. Yeah, he was. If, we traveled through Eastern Eastern Europe um, 2018, I guess it was, yeah. and everybody had their hooch. And they want to share it, they're very proud of it. Yeah. yeah, so he had two glasses, poured a shot, we downed it, shook hands and yeah. carried on. And she gave me a bunch of little lavender sachets, which was very, very That's sweet. That's they're called, that's called lavender balls. <laughs> oh, lavender balls. So Makes my clothes smell pretty. Yeah, so we stuffed those into the panniers and we would remember yeah. our day in lavender country. Today we're leaving Bale and Soul, leaving the lavender fields behind and headed to Nîmes. Once again I found a hilltop town to check out along the way. Up there for a little camp. So we did a little stroll around town. And then headed out. Our route first took us around these 14th century walls of Avignon. These 10 foot thick walls were built when the Pope resided here, which was between 1309 and 1377. We're back on our way and our next stop is the Pont de Gare, which is an old Roman ruin from the first century mm -hmm. and it's basically a bridge and an aqueduct system. Yeah, it's part of a 50 kilometer long aqueduct system that took water into Nîmes. The rain had let up by the time we got there so that was a bonus and we were so excited to see the ruin that we just yeah, took we... our jackets off, tied them on the bike and left the umbrella behind. It was going to become a bit of a problem. In 1743, the new pedestrian bridge was built to allow pedestrians and carts to cross. And that's the part that we actually crossed when we went over to the other side. So that's what's existing right now. Yeah, that still exists today. It's totally separate from the actual original Roman ruin. Yeah. We went down to the river and walk underneath the bridge. Uh, just amazing to see because the precise engineering it would have taken to have the right slope for the water to flow. Yeah, they would have had to basically survey 50 yeah. kilometers of, yeah. of line to get this to the city and do what they wanted it to do. Yeah. And 
then we decided to go up the stairs to the top of it. Which was an amazing view from up there. Amazing how tall this is. I believe it's 50 meters high. You can walk up a set of stairs to get to the top, but you can't walk over the top of the actual aqueduct. So you can take a view of it. But the interesting thing is you can turn around and see the tunnel system or a portion of the tunnel system that the water actually ran through. Mm -hmm. So this is part of the aqueduct system that took water into Nimes. This is one of the tunnels that the water would have flowed through. And then um, it meets up with the big aqueduct that they built over the bridge up here. Pretty amazing. Which is where we stood while it poured rain. Yeah, we tried to hide in there. Hopefully it would, the rain would pass quickly, but that was not to be. No, <laughs> we had to walk home in the rain. Yeah, we got a little drenched. The walk of shame. Yeah. But wow, what an amazing sight. Once the water gets into Nimes, it enters a cistern uh, catchment system. Castellum, I think it's called. Yeah, and this is, at this point, it's all, they built it with different tiers so that priority will go to different portions of the system. Yeah, so the first part, it would fill up and it would go to all the wells in the city squares. The majority of the people could get their water that way. Then if, it, if they had enough water, it would fill up. I think the next one was actually for the garden and the fountain. And then the wealthy people was the next level. They could get water if they had enough. And then for the bath, I think the bath was the last priority. So it was an interesting way they had that. No bath, just use the perfume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We put on our wet coats and we're going into Nimes for the, for yep. the night. And it rained. It was... Yeah, so it, was we were, a, it was a, in yeah. general a pretty soggy, yeah, soggy we, day and we rolled into Nimes. After having a bit of trouble figuring out how to get into our apartment in Nimes, it is very cute and we're glad that we got in because it is now... I'll try to show you pouring outside. You can hear that and see that it's pretty heavy. We're already a little wet, so we're gonna just lay everything out to dry out. And uh, then when we're feeling a little more refreshed, we'll go we'll see what there is on the menu for tonight. Because of the heavy rain, the restaurants packed up all their tables and chairs, so we were kind of on our own. So I think we just went to the grocery store, yep. and made a salad. So after we had our supper, it actually stopped raining, so we headed out to check out the city a little bit. There's lots of uh, Roman ruins in Nimes. They have a huge amphitheater there. Mm -hmm. Probably probably one of the best, or is the best preserved. Yeah. It's, it's really nice anyway. Couldn't go inside, it was closed up, but uh, apparently they still use this thing to yeah. this day for concerts. And... Yeah, I starts to rain again, so Glenn decided he wanted to go back to the apartment, so he headed back and I grabbed the umbrella and set out for a stroll of my own to check out some more sites in the city. So they have beautiful streets. There's the Maison de Cari, I believe it is, the very well-preserved Roman structure. I think it was a temple at one time.
Yeah, I wandered down this beautiful street with the canal. And it led me to this garden. It was built in the 17th century, actually as a public park. I think I read that it was built just after Versailles and it was actually quite a amazing thing because they built it as a public park and not just for the royalty. There's the first century Temple of Diana, they call it, but I don't, I'm not sure if it was actually a temple. They think maybe it was a library, part of a bigger structure that was there at the time. all sorts of sweeping staircases that went up the hill. Water and fountains. And some statues. Yeah, it was an interesting, uh, interesting to walk around. Definitely Nîmes is a city that we could have spent more time in, but uh, we were happy to have the little bit of time we had. And... Our next episode, we are heading out to Carcassonne. Yeah. Carcassonne? Carcassonne. Carcassonne. I'm not sure. And uh, this is a really, a really neat place. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. If you like this video, please uh, like and subscribe and leave a comment and it'd be appreciated and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Yeah, thank you for joining us.